This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today it's all about the library, all about the books, and all about putting them in the right order. Because today we're going to be building our own shelves in our own library. We're going to be looking at Ex Libris. This is from Renegade Game Studios. It's for one to four players. Just got released at Gen Con. It was my number one most anticipated game. So let's find out more about it. Let me teach you how to play it and I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of Ex Libris, you'll get one of the 12 possible libraries that you'll be with, like the Igloon Information or the Dungeon of Deep Thought. Each of these come with their own tokens, some of them wooden bits, some of them like real cool things like the Gelatinous Cube or the Mummy or the Ghost or the Witch or the Wizard or the Fire Imp, Sasquatch, the Bookworm, the Goblin Sneak, the Automation or the Trash Golem. And of course, each of these has a special ability. For example, the snowman can freeze others out, and where they go, nobody else can go. Now, over the game, you'll be scoring most of your points by creating your library and shelving books into no more than three rows, but they're all going to have to be in order. And going from top to bottom, left to right, they do all have to stay in order like this. And even if they're the same letter, there's numbers. So four of seven, six of seven, even though these are the same letter, they're still in order, but you're going top down, left to right, everything has to pretty much be in order to score at the end. You can place them out of order, but you won't be scoring for them at the end. You'll notice that each of these books actually have a different name, like Love Potions and Soothing Lotions, or Weak Drinks to Make You Stink. And they're all unique, which is really cool. All you really need to know is the type of book it is, but it's really good that they went through the extra effort to make sure they all have unique and interesting names that all come from different styles of books. So the icons you see on the cards have to do with these. And these are the different types of books, spells and potions, reference text, historical volumes, corrupted codices, monster manuals, and fantastical fictions. Now, randomly at the beginning of the game, two of those types of books are gonna be put on the main board. And one of them will be prominent works, which means if you have the most of these books at the end, you'll get 15 points. Nine for second place, four for third place. One type of book will randomly be banned books. They'll be worth minus one point if the game gives you some focus. And each player, not only getting their special token, they'll get some assistance, and you'll also get one of these, and you'll secretly look at it. So this would be my focus for the game, is Fantastical Fictions, and I will put them here, because they're basically worth two times normal. They're gonna be two points apiece at the end of the game. Now, at the beginning of each round, you're gonna place as many of these tiles as there are players. In this case, we're showing you a two-player game to keep it simple. This one always starts, and then you'll shuffle all the tiles and put one here. Now, these are different spots that you can go throughout the game. So if you use one of the assistants, you could go here and do what it says. Some of them activate immediately. Other ones activate a little bit later in the round that have a clock. For example, the auction house. One placing, you choose a bid space. If somebody was already there, let's say somebody was here, if I outbid them, then this would go back to that player. Uh, and whoever's the highest at the end would discard however many cards from their hand. Because these are the cards you're trying to get from the auction house, but everyone actually starts with six of these book cards. So you would discard a certain amount as, as you bid and to get that many cards from here because you might really like the ones that are here. So every time this auction house is out, you deal three to it and do certain things here. In this case, we're bidding for them. This one is you draw one card for every assistant you've placed uh, this turn, including this one, and then you take the first player token. Now, in addition to going on some of the boards that are in the middle of the table, you can also go on your own library. And when you go there, you can either draw a card or shelve a card with one of your workers. Drawing a card will be getting another one of these book cards from the deck, and shelving a card will be placing it in your, your library. And once you place a card, every other card that you place has to be orthogonally adjacent to at least one other card. So you start somewhere, you're trying to figure out which of the three rows it's in. If this was an S, then probably either the second row or the third row would you'd probably start and you'd be building around this. Now remember that everyone has a special ability. For example, the snowman is once I go to one tile, nobody else can go there, it freezes it out. So this is a good ability to go here, which means no one else can outbid me. And I only have to discard one to, you know, uh, to get uh, all of these three auction cards and shelve them immediately per the text. So each of these tiles are going to do a different thing based upon the text that's there. Once everyone has placed their normal assistance and their special assistance, we'd go and resolve. Any of the ones that have the clock would resolve in order from the number on the top left of the tile. Once all that's done, then we'd go to start cleaning up. 
The tile with the lowest number in the top left corner will get placed on the board where it says permanent location. This will be available for the rest of the game. All the other tiles that are out will get will go to a discard pile and then we'll fill up for the new round. Then we would fill up from the tile uh, pile to the board. Now remember, there's always as many tiles as there are players. So in a four-player game, there'd be four new tiles out every single round. Now, let's look at these, for example. Take one card from this. If you go here, you take one of these four cards, because you deal four, to this location. You take one, and then you give one to an opponent. Both of them can be shelved immediately. Now remember, because most of the time, you have to do, go to your board at the bottom in order to shelve something. But a lot of these allow you to shelve them right away at the community center. And a lot of these have very thematic ties. The garbage dump. This will happen after all the actions during the resolution phase. But only one player can go here. You name a category of a book, like maybe Monstrous Manuals, and then you search the discard pile, take one, and shelve it. And just so you know, there's a lot of these location tiles that will come out throughout the game. There's just shy of 20 of them in the game. Now this will continue until any one player has uh, a between 12 and 16 cards in their library, depending on the amount of players. With two players, it's 16 cards. But let's just show you, since it fits on the camera wall, let's just assume the game ended. Uh, and then what you do is each player would look to the player uh, next to them, and they would check to make sure everything's in order. Again, if it's the same letter, as long as, as, long as the numbers go in order, you're good. So this is A4, A6, this is okay. We come down here to S, and then there's an A and a V, um, and there's a C here. So. so this is definitely not in order, so it would flip. C is definitely after D and before H, so this isn't good. So this would flip. So once everything's good, you'd then start to score. The game comes with a really nice, large, dry erase board uh, that you'll be using to check alphabetical order and go through all of the scoring. Then everyone's going to look for st shelf stability, which essentially is looking for the largest sort of rectangle that at least has the card on the bottom row. So there's only three cards on my bottom row, but we see we have a rectangle. Even the ones flipped over count for this. So sometimes you can put cards there and still score points. So it's one for each card here. So that would give me nine points. Then everyone will tell the scorekeeper how many books they have of each of the categories. Remember, one of them is your focus, one of them is the prominent works, and one is the banned books. And remember, the prominent works is, uh, you know, for points, 15, 9, and 4 points for the one who has the most second and third. And everyone's going to be getting minus one point for the banned books. So again, you'll look for the prominent works and you'll get points based upon that. You'll get minus points based upon the uh, banned books that were that for that round. Then we look at variety. So what you do is, other than the banned books, you look at the one you have the least of, you multiply it by three, so you get points for actually spreading out and doing that. And then you'd look at your library focus. Uh, if you remember, mine was Fantastical Fictions. We'd count each of those. You'd get two points for each of those. Then you add up basically just this B section, and whoever has the most points is the winner. All right, well, there is Ex Libris. Well, let's first start about the things that I liked about it. First of all, fantastic theme. You know, I'm tired of the same old fantasy, same old stuff. And so it's great to see something with a very unique theme, a realistic one, and one that they treated really well. So I love the, in the unique theme here. The art in this game is awesome. Like pretty much all of Renegade games, it looks amazing on the table, especially all the book, all the book cards, uh, all the different book titles. My gosh, I was talking to them at Gen Con about all the different uh, titles, I think there's over 150 different titled books there, and the designer had a spreadsheet going through different ones, and they're all thematically in the type of book that they are, and really cool ideas. So if you have time to look through some of those book names, it just really adds to the game. It's much, it makes it much more fun and, and immersive, in my opinion. Uh, great production. Uh, I was really surprised that I think there's about 12 different libraries that you could be in the game, uh, and each one of them had a special piece. Like, the 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 uh, the cube there, the green cube that had the little bubble in it, and you know the snowman and and the Sasquatch and the bookworm, and it just went the extra mile to get these custom pieces done. So it just it knocked it out of the park with that because it just feels really fun to play, and you really feel like you are that library. Uh, the game has a lot of wide strategies for scoring, which I really like. You know, do you want to concentrate always on the prominence works? Well, yeah, usually, but if you feel like you're not in the lead, you can go for something else, like focusing on your focus which is like whatever books is your secret because uh, you're gonna get two points for those maybe you want to just do a little bit of both maybe get that and then spread out and do a variety try to get as many of each of the different books stepping them up because you're gonna get three points uh, th a multiplier of three times the one you have the least of that's not the 
uh, the band book. So there's lots of different ways to go. Also the shelf, uh, shelf stability. So I like how it has different ways to score so that in each game, you're gonna have different things that you may be going for, especially depending on what other people are doing. I love the puzzly aspect of building the shelf. I love puzzly games. And you know, you start the game with one book with one letter there, and then you're going around, you have to place them adjacent to each other, trying to figure out, oh, which row should I put this on? Do I, can I leave enough room here? Ooh, this one's a little close to that letter. It's not gonna leave me a lot. Uh, and I like that aspect of it. I really like that sometimes you can purposely also place a card and it will get flipped over at the end, but at least it helps to your shelving uh, point. So I really like that aspect of it. Um, I liked how every game's gonna feel different because the tiles are going to come out at different times every game. Uh, and that's going to change the way how the game feels, you know, and different tiles are better at the beginning versus late. You know, if you get the dump, uh, the, the one where you get to go in the trash and look, it's not going to be as good during the beginning, but it might come back again if the game's long enough, if you shuffle them through and come out again. And I like how the actions, uh, you have more choices as the game goes on because those those tiles, one, the, the lowest one goes up above. So as the, at the beginning, your choices are somewhat limited, but as the game goes on, every round you're getting one more big decision to go to and a different place to go to. And I really like that aspect and I love the special abilities of all the different characters in the libraries. Uh, now it's a game is short. This game is short. It's, it says 45 minutes on the box and that's pretty accurate. It's going to be an hour or less even with four players. Uh, so I think some people might be surprised at how short this is. It isn't a heavy game but there's definitely a decent amount of stuff to figure out. So it really hit me on my on my sweet spot there. So any cons? Well uh, the actions are hard to read on the tiles. Uh, if you're new to the game, uh, you know, the tiles have text on there and it's kind of small text and it's a little hard to read, especially if there's four people sitting around the table. You're going to have to read them off. I, I don't know if iconography would have worked because there's so many different things they're going to relate to that it probably would have been a language in its own. Uh, but I'm not sure if, the if it could have been a little larger or if they could have done iconography, but it's, it's, I just felt that the text was hard to read because uh, it was very small. Uh, now, if you play this with four players, I definitely preferred it with two and three. Uh, if you play with four players that have all played the game and many, you know, multiple times and you know what all the tiles do, it's going to be fine. However, if it's your first game for everybody and it's four players or it's relatively new, it's going to be tough because every round, one tile is going up top, all the rest are getting discarded, four new ones are coming out. So every round you have to go through four new tiles, their abilities, struggle to read them, teach people what they are. So I wouldn't recommend playing this as a four player game if it's your first time playing or if the majority of the people will be the first time playing. I would recommend a smaller group. It will just help you get into the flow and learn the game a little bit better. Uh, and again, again with the tiles, uh, I just wish there was a player aid maybe that had all the tile ability. So you could just look and then you could just be reading it on your own at other people's turns as opposed to asking somebody what it says or passing it to you. So that was really the biggest issue I had with the game. Uh, but overall, I loved it. Uh, it hit on all cylinders, puzzly, looks awesome, feels awesome fun to mess with the shelves, fun to go for the different points. It's a very good game. It's one that really does feel like a bigger game than it is because it is quite short. So overall, I loved it. Uh, it, it I don't know, it, it was gonna, did it live up to your number one? I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. All I do know is that I loved it and I'm keeping it. So let's go do a saxophone serenade. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.